Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov. In this video, I'm going to show you the procedure that's called needle cricothrotomy. So, uh, what's the indication? The indication being patient is unable to be ventilated and unable to be intubated. So, once you determine after, let's say, three attempts of intubation and supraglottic airway, you cannot get patient's airway, uh, this is the procedure that you may employ. Know that a needle uh, cricothrotomy is not as efficacious as surgical cricothrotomy. The reason being is that we're going to place a 14 gauge um, catheter and you notice the lumen is very narrow even though it's 14 gauge. So truly speaking, you're not going to be able to ventilate the patient. All you are going to be able to do is provide some passive oxygenation and then after a while when the chest gets distended, you may need to disconnect your device and press on their chest to get rid of that build up air. Right? Uh, and again, the reason why is that if you notice for surgical crike, we're using uh, ET tube 6.0. It's way bigger lumen than any 14 gauge catheter that you're going to employ. So just looking at the, the diameter of it, you could see, right, 14 gauge can't even compare. So this is um, not as effective. So what equipment are you going to need? So you're going to need uh, a 10 cc syringe with saline. So this is essentially a saline lock. And the reason why I want to have some saline in it I essentially expel about five of it uh, so that I get air bubbles so I know that I'm in the correct location as I penetrate through soft tissues. Uh, and once I get to the trachea, I'll have ease of advancement of the plunger and air bubbles. I'm using a 14 gauge catheter. And this is uh, this needle is much bigger length that I need it for. This is three and a quarter. This is, new th this is used for needle decompression for the chest. Uh, the reason why I'm using this is because I could thread my syringe over this catheter. This is the correct uh, length, but I cannot place my catheter, sorry, my syringe at the, at the back side of it, so I'm not going to employ it. But if you were going to do this procedure, you want to use the side, the length of it, that will essentially not be too long, right? But the reason why, again, I'm using this is that I am able to connect the syringe to it. Now, uh, the contraindication for this procedure is inability to find the landmarks. So the, now you need to know the landmarks, and the landmarks being the cricothyroid membrane. So the way you want to find this site is starting from the sternal notch, working way up, you're going to find uh, the cricoid rings, and this is essentially the, the hard cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage, and this prominence here will be th the thyroid cartilage. And between these two is going to be the cricothyroid membrane, and that's the area that you're going to essentially cannulate. And this is a, a 3D model of the same airway. So just to show you, you see all the rings. Right, and then the, this is your cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, and in between is going to be the cricothyroid membrane. We're cannulating this area, right? And this is what we're going to locate. Unlike the surgical crike where I stand on the patient's right and I stabilize here and I cut with my scalpel down, right, and to the side, here I'm actually going to be standing at the backside of the patient because I'm going to be holding a syringe two fingers here and my thumb up. So I'm giving like a thumbs up sign. So as I'm advancing, I'm pulling, I am pulling up, right? Another way you could hold this is take your uh, middle and the next finger here and use your thumb. Depending on what you find comfortable, I find this uh, position way more comfortable for me. So this is how we're going to perform this procedure, right? So before we cannulate, we need to find our landmarks, right? As I just explained to you. So we cleanse the site, sternal notch, Cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, cricothyroid membrane. Okay. Marked. All right. Come over here. Got my BVM ready. I got my antidal CO2 pre connected. And what you notice here, this is a 3.0, and you must have a 3.0 connector from the ET tube, otherwise you won't be able to connect your BVM. The reason why I'm using a, a pediatric one is you don't need a big adult BVM to squeeze. It's gonna be very hard for you to squeeze, so you wanna make sure your your pop-up valve that you see here, you actually override it, right? You see this pop-up valve? You don't want it to engage, so you wanna close it. Why do, you, why do I wanna close it? Because on this device, for example, as you see, if I start to exceed my pressure, this valve will pop up and I don't want it here because it will exceed the pressure and I want it to deliver right enough to actually obtain the chest rise. So I'm gonna close it. Uh, 3.0 ET tube, right? 
Um, got my sight. Dominant hand, thumbs up. All right. And then what I'm going to do, stabilize with my thumb and the next finger here. Bevel up, going towards caudally, towards the legs. And as I'm inserting, I'm pulling back up. You notice that I have more air bubbles here. I have ease of advancement. I stop because I don't want to penetrate through and through. I advance my catheter. Sharps container. I hold this in place because if I don't hold it, I'm going to get a kink. Connect my 3.0 here. And you notice, right? I override my pop off valve and I get the, very hard to squeeze the bag and I have bare elevation of the chest, right? Yeah, you will, you may have some uh, chest rise, but probably not at all. And you want to look at entitled CO2 uh, that you are getting something, but probably you're not going to get anything because there's no ventilation that's occurring. So you're going to pass this off to your partner. I don't let go of this, even when I secure it. Uh, the reason why is I don't want to kink it. The way I'm going to secure it, I'm basically just going to put a chevron. Uh, chevron is how we teach you to start IVs. Right? So put tape under. And then all you're going to do is just the crisscross method. Like so. You could put more tape to reinforce, but again, uh, doesn't matter how much tape you put, your hand stays in place here in order not to dislodge it, right? And this is essentially the procedure that you're going to perform in order to perform needle cricothrotomy. And truly what this patient will need, they will need a surgical crike. So essentially, um, they will need to have an incision and a, a tube 6.0 placed. And as you could see, just based on the diameters alone, right? This can never, ever, ever compare to an endotracheal tube, for which you can get extranation and ventilation. This you cannot. Plus, this definitively controls the airway, uh, which this does, this does not. Once you bring this patient to the hospital, they'll still need to perform um, a surgical crike uh, in order to gain access to the airway. So essentially, this is surgical crike and the steps in order to perform it.